now Saturday, so um, I guess it's been two days since I've lost my wallet. And uh, like I said, I haven't had any money or anything, but um, things have worked out. So I've been able to people have give, some people have given me some food, and um, I realized I could order pizzas, <laughs> all that stuff. So I'm totally okay, and I can pay for my guest house with um, with a, a credit card that's logged into Airbnb. So I'm I'm okay. I just haven't been able to move. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go anywhere. Like really nervous about all that. But anyways, so Katie had mailed me her um, her credit card and bang, it just came. So I have got um, hopefully a way to go get some money out of a cash machine and then I can continue progressing in my life. <laughs> I'm no longer stuck in this yes house. These people are all just like, what is this guy doing? Like, why go do something? I mean, they know my situation, but <laughs> I, I think they, there's a bit of like, they feel bad for me and like a bit of like, Quit hanging out in here so much, <laughs> like mixed in. But I'm really, really happy now. So I have, I have, the, I have this card, and um, I uh, now I have to worry about finding an ATM that it works in. Hopefully, it wouldn't it shouldn't be too much trouble. It should be walkable from here. Um, usually, we have luck at 7-Eleven, so I'm gonna try that. And if not, I'll just keep hitting ATMs until it functions. <laughs> it's really all I can do. And uh, then I don't. I, I thought like, I mean, what am I supposed to do here? Am I supposed to go go back to Tokyo now? Like I got to Hokkaido, like I want to keep exploring Hokkaido. And like, once I have money, like the real, like there's no real reason to go back to Tokyo. I don't have my wallet. That disaster is just going to continue to exist. Like I have to go and I have to get all my IDs reissued and I have to do all that stuff. And we just hit a, um, a week of like holiday stuff. So I think going to immigration this week is just going to be a disaster. It's old bond here now. So I, I think I'm just going to keep traveling. Like I don't see a reason why not to. Um, I'm a little bit like emotionally bummed out about having lost my wallet. <laughs> really, it's like taken a bit of a toll on me over the last couple of days. But um, you know, I mean, what what are you gonna do? Is this a thing? Uh, so I'm just thinking about like all the things that are in it and like have to get all that reissued. <laughs> but this is so much better. Like this this made my day. I had this now, and I was worried it wasn't gonna come until super late. So. I can make some progress and figure out where I want to go next. And uh, actually, just like two minutes ago, before the guy came to deliver it, I ordered another pizza. <laughs> I really now I wish I hadn't because I could have just gone and got money, got something someplace else. But I'll take a shower and get ready, and then eat my pizza, and then I'll depart, and uh, we'll see where I go. <laughs> I just opened the opened it to get the credit card out, and the card is in there and everything. That's cool. But Katie took a risk and put two hundred dollars basically in there for me as well. Um, she had packaged it with like this so you couldn't see through it. I mean still like Japan nobody's gonna steal anything but um, a bit of a risk but like that's <laughs> that's awesome. I, was, I knew that I knew that I could get I had I had 2,000 yen that I'd gotten as a refund for my Airbnb and I knew I could get back to Tokyo with just that 2,000 yen but now I'm really good I can get back in luxury I can take like the express like really nice seats in the boat and everything so this is legit. <laughs> my pizza arrived. <laughs> Man look at that. Another slice of delicious. Is asparagus on pizza a normal thing? I don't think so. I, 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 I don't know, maybe. Maybe I've done that before. It's good though. Mm, it's really good. And the other, um, they have a good cheese on this one and everything. This one's really good. Wow. So, uh, pizza is doing all right here. <laughs> here I am carrying my trash out. <laughs> it's all good. Everything I said bad about that guest house, I feel bad now. There's definitely some weird vibes going on there, and I saw some things that were definitely eyebrow raising. But it's super clean, and they worked like around me and my situation. They booked out all their rooms. They still gave me a place to sleep, and they charged me only a thousand yen instead of three thousand yen for that. So like, I have no complaints. It was a strange experience, but a good experience. So um, she asked me on my way out. She's like, "Where are you going?" I, like, I have no idea. I need to do laundry. Like I should have done that yesterday, but I was just like mentally broken. I was just like whatever. And it's a long way to go do the laundry. And I didn't have any money and I didn't want to spend money on laundry and blah blah blah. So didn't make sense. So my first stop is I'm gonna to try to find a convenience store so I can get some uh, cash. Once I have more cash, then I'm comfortable with the credit card working, then I can say okay I'm ready to continue my journey. And then I'm going to go somewhere. I have no idea. Maybe I'll go to do a coin laundry first and figure it out, or maybe I'll just get a sign that says north and see where I end up. I don't know. It's going through my mind about things that like would suck to lose more than my wallet, and without a doubt, video footage. I'd much rather lose my wallet. Like if somebody was like, you gotta throw one of those two off a cliff, it would 100% be the wallet. I'd be like, oh, fuck the wallet. 
So I'm just happy that I have the video footage. And in case you're curious, I do have three copies of it. <laughs> so to, to be able to lose all three copies would be a, like, I guess right now my entire body would have to fall into a lake. Like that's the only way that that would happen. And if that, one of the copies is inside of a, a waterproof bag. So I'd probably still be okay. <laughs> so, you know, you can only have one copy of your wallet, you know, like, I guess I should have had a separate credit card or something in another place. And I didn't, usually when we travel, there's two of us, so we have two copies of all the important things we need, you know what I mean? Like, there's two copies of money, there's two copies of wallets, or two copies of credit cards, etc., etc. But in this case, there wasn't, and I'm just traveling like I would usually travel with Katie. So, maybe I have to change that up, but... I guess I really can't, because I've only got, we've only got one credit card between the two of us left, and it's with me. So, if I lose that one, then I'm really boned. Well, this solves all my problems. I can continue my trip. All right, got some cash. I got a new sign made trying to get back to the train station. And I got a mango drink to celebrate. Because all I've been drinking is water for obvious reasons. Which, I mean, it's probably better for me than the mango drink, but it's gonna taste good, because that means that I, I got through my hardships. <laughs> it's like first world problems. Not the way two days to get a mango drink. <laughs> Other people can't eat, like, they're starving. Like, my situation is so bad. This is all right. <laughs> this is without a doubt the tastiest mango drink I've ever had. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I, uh, I, I split up my financial situation a bit between my two bags. So there should be some redundancy there. There should be some redundancy there now. <laughs> I thought about grabbing a bus just to get to the train station because it really isn't that far. It'll only be a couple hundred yen or whatever and it would just get me there and I'm already a little late today. It would just get me there moving a little faster, blah, blah, blah. And I come over and I look at the schedule. Look at this. See this big area where there's no times <laughs> from 8 o'clock until 6 o'clock? Yeah, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> bus isn't gonna happen. There weren't very many cars going by on that road that I was on. So I was getting a little worried I wasn't gonna get picked up, but again, I think that might work into my advantage sometimes, no cars. People feel more obligated to help you out. So uh, I got picked up by this uh, friendly old man from Tokyo. He's retired up here, lived here for five years. And um, he was just like, might be a little hard to get, hit, get, get to hitchhike in Japan. It's kind of like what a lot of people think. They're like, nobody else will ever pick you up. And like somebody always picks you up. So it's funny that it's like all those people that are picking me up have the same kind of thought process. But um, yeah, he drove me into the city, saved me a lot of time walking. And uh, I'm thinking about going and buying a sleeping bag because I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried about getting stranded outside in Hokkaido without anything to cover myself. Because even when I was in Aomori and I slept on that bench, it was pretty cold. So um, yeah, I'm a little concerned. I think I'm gonna try to buy a sleeping bag. I saw one in here a couple days ago for 12 bucks. So if I can get that, and it looks like I can actually carry it somehow, which I don't know. My bag doesn't really have that allowance of space in it at the moment. I have to figure something out. But if I can figure all that out, I'm gonna do it. All right, so um, I hit what's called a recycle shop, which is like a, um, kind of like a pawn shop, but they're usually a lot cleaner and um, just nicer in general. And they sell, you know, pawn shop stuff, like watches and, like um, video games and TVs and clothing actually here and like just about anything you can think of. And um, I don't think they work like pawn shops where you can like leave something and then like get, like, hold it, give you money and then get it back. Like that sketchy part of the pawn shop thing isn't there. I think it's just like you sell things, they give you very little money for it and then they resell them. So anyway, I got a probably what is a used um, sleeping bag, but they had four of the exact same model and they all looked brand new. So I don't know, maybe somebody bought them and never used them. Maybe they used them, who cares? I don't really care. Um, and I was off the price a little bit. It was only 15 bucks, but I walked around this town a couple days ago looking for outdoor shops and I couldn't find any that were open. So these are the only sleeping bags I could find. So I spent 15 bucks in the sleeping bag and if I use it once, it's totally gonna be worth it. I don't mind it at all. And my main concern of it not being um, something that will fit in my bag is solved because my bag looks a little silly now, but I can carry that, that's no big deal. All right, so uh, I think I've come up with a plan of where to go. I opened my guidebook and the very first thing I saw was this, this bowl of, um, is donburi, which is like stuff on rice. But the stuff on the rice happens to be this delicious looking pig. So uh, I'm gonna try to go there. Um, I looked at my GPS thing and it said it would take about two hours by car. A um, little worried that I'm gonna be hitting this a little late. I don't know how many people are gonna be going that direction this late in the day, you know what I mean? So I'm a little like, <laughs> this might not be the best idea. Like this might be an earlier morning type of expedition to try, but I figure screw it, I'll try. If I don't get the, if I don't get a ride in a bit, then I'll just go to Sapporo instead. It's only like an hour away. 
So, um, and I guarantee there's a ton of people going back and forth to Sapporo all the time. So that's my backup plan, worst case scenario. And I don't even have a reason to go there. Just, I just will. I kind of just want to get out of this town right now. <laughs> that's really how it is. And uh, some, 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 some donbori would be amazing. I walked past the 100 yen shop, so I hopped in there. Got a new wallet. <laughs> It's actually the same wallet that I had when I first moved to Japan. I got it at the same shop. So uh, we're back in business kind of, except for it's really sad because the inside of the wallet is just empty. <laughs> okay, so a wonderful lady picked me up and um, she drove me quite a ways, like maybe 30 kilometers or something to something called a Michinoeki. And that just means um, road station. And it's basically a really nice rest stop and has a lot of like shops and stuff like that. And we drove through all this farmland and like you could smell the cattle and like all that stuff. It was just lovely. And this particular Michinoeki has got a bunch of like things that are sold and produced in the area, which I think is kind of common of them. And um, from here, a lot of people gather and then jump back on the road and head their direction or whatever. So hopefully it'll work the same way that the service area has worked on the highway where I'll be easy to find a, find a ride out of here because there's so many people stopping and it's easy to like converse with them a little bit, etc., etc. But of, um, of note, she gave me this as a gift. And um, because of course she has to check that she's the one giving gifts, not me. Like it doesn't make sense, right? I gave you a ride, so therefore I must give you a gift. Good Japanese people are amazing. It's just unbelievable. So anyway, she gave me this. And what's funny about this is this is a um, thing that we had looked for when we were in Toyama when we went uh, on a trip there last winter, I guess. I don't know, all the time blends together. And it was a thing we wanted to show in the videos, but we couldn't find it for like a reasonable price and it wasn't sold in restaurants and it was a weird thing, blah, blah, blah. So I, we just wrote it off at the time, but uh, bam, I got it now. <laughs> it's um, basically sushi on rice. And um, I mean, isn't that sushi? <laughs> but it's like in like a cake form or something. So let's see if I can figure out some place I can go so I can sit down and open this thing up and get a bite or two. My stomach is grumbling a little bit weird, so I'm a little nervous about eating a whole bunch, but uh, I'd like to try a little bit. So you pull it out and it is in a plastic and there is um, like a plastic wrap around it, you can see, and a little tray. And you can see, it looks like it's a salmon and um, it's packaged, you know, very nicely. And there's chopsticks in there and everything. So uh, now I'm gonna shut off the camera and I'm gonna open it. <laughs> Came with a knife. <laughs> Again, this is kind of hard to film, but um, yeah, one-handed cutting this, you know, you get the idea, right? That's what it looks like to cut something with a knife. Oh, it's actually, hey, that's working all right. <laughs> it's really, really difficult one-handed. I don't want to fall on the ground. Mm-hmm. These chopsticks are a little shorter than normal. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. I, I, there's always been a standard length. This is really difficult. All right, so I've got some rice, I've got some fish. It's pretty good. It's amazing, it's really good. Oh man, maybe I will eat the whole thing. I'd also like to note that I'm sitting on grass. It's amazing. Hokkaido's great. It's getting a little bit late, like the sun is not really going down, but the shadows are getting long, so I don't know, maybe it's like four o'clock or something. Maybe earlier, I'm not really sure. Um, but this this place is, the, 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 the Michinoeki is like perfect for this because there's only one entrance and exit, so I can stand here and everybody that leaves sees me. So like, that's awesome. And also, if I don't get a ride, which wouldn't kill me with how lovely it is outside, this would not be a bad place to stay. Like. I could just throw my sleeping bag that I just bought out and I would be all right. <laughs> kind of, like, it's like 5%. I'm like, I kind of want to just get stuck here. Like, just relax and be here. And I think they have Wi-Fi too. I'm not sure if they'll leave it on all night, but if they did, shit, that's all my problems. So about a minute after I made my video saying, I might end up sleeping in this park, somebody picked me up, drove me all the way to the city that I wanted to go to. They were returning from Sapporo and they were coming back to, um, uh, where they lived, where I'm now in, in it's um, Obihiro is where I'm at now. And uh, they, were, they got the car, I got in the car and they were like talking to really, like immediately we're talking about the, the name of something and then um, uh, Hanabi, which is a fireworks festival. And I was just like, what? I didn't understand what they were talking about. I didn't know the name of it. And I 
I talked, we talked to, I asked them, like, whoa, 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 what are we talking about? And they were like, oh, in our town that we're going to is the biggest fireworks festival of the year. Like, these festivals, like, I'm, I'm just falling into them by accident, essentially. So, now I'm a little concerned about finding a place to sleep, um, like, in a manga cafe or something. This is a pretty substantial town, so they should have something like that. I'm going to find internet to look it up. Um, but right around here, there aren't very many people. I guess the, the fireworks festival is like on the outskirts of town. And I have no idea how to get there or what that area is called or anything. But they said that it goes from 7.30 at night until 10. And it's the whole time they're firing fireworks. Like, <laughs> it's a pretty like serious fireworks show. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll try to figure out where it is. Maybe I'll just relax, I don't know. I mean, if it's just fireworks, I mean, it'd be cool to see, but um, it's not like when I was in Aomori and I really, really wanted to see that really unique festival. I don't think it's going to be like that. That's not the impression I got from these people. But um, yeah, it was a family. Um, they were in Sapporo visiting their oldest, older daughter. She goes to university there and they were just driving back. And it's, um, it was really nice because because of where I was standing, I didn't end up on a highway. So the what we looked at out the window was just mind-blowing. Just like really beautiful forests and driving through all these farms and they were telling me all the things that people are growing and um, saw a lot of cows and we saw a field like this meadow full of uh, deer and the deer up here are big like they're like American style deer and um, we saw foxes on the side of the road and <laughs> then um, we drove over this mountain and went through a bunch of tunnels and some of the tunnels were really long some of the tunnels were really short and we popped out of one mountain at one point and it was just really thick fog like you couldn't see anything and they were bummed because they wanted to get a view over the city from the top of this mountain but you couldn't see you could barely see the hood of the car it was an awesome ride it was like three hours three and a half hours i expected it to be two hours so maybe i shouldn't trust my gps it also could have been because he took the regular roads instead of the highway you know that's probably what it is and it was a much nicer ride that way so i'm really happy he did um, man, it's a bit cold here. I am wearing shorts right now, and that's going to be a thing that's not going to happen much longer. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, internet. i got to find internet and figure out what the hell I'm going to do. <laughs> I just looked up, and the very first thing I see is a sign that says Butodon, which is that meal that I saw in my book that I really want to have. So, I'm in the right place. <laughs> There's a lot of girls walking around in Yukatas right now, like where I'm at, and they're all headed the same direction. So I'm thinking what I'm going to try to do is just get rid of my bag and find a coin locker, put it in there, and then um, follow the girls in the Yukatas and see where I end up. Whew, it's cold. I'm going <laughs> to have to put on a sweatshirt, man. Uh, yeah, so maybe I will end up in Mott City. I'm not sure yet. We'll find out. Yeah, there's definitely a fireworks festival. Like, they started firing them off, and it sounds like a war zone now because it's just, like, echoing through this valley that this town seems to be in. And... Um, I just peeked around the corner and I could see them momentarily, but they're taking probably one of their famous commercial breaks. So uh, they're not shooting them off at this exact moment, but I did just see some explosions. They look quite a ways away. I'm not sure if I'll make it all the way there. Um, probably should be looking, I, I, I used the internet for like one second to email Katie to make sure that she knew I was alive after the whole mess with the credit cards. So I did, <laughs> just got excited about the idea. Oh, there's something going on. I didn't even look up a place to stay or anything. So maybe I should focus on that a little more. Um, but I got rid of my bag. It's at the station. The station closes at 12.30. I won't be able to get my bag after that, so I gotta make sure I get there before then. Uh, otherwise, I'm a little worried, because if I didn't end up inside tonight and I didn't have my bag, it'd be pretty damn cold, I think. So, I think I gotta really focus this time, not screw this one up. This fireworks festival is a pretty huge thing. Like, it almost looks like a rock show. They've got this in this valley and these fireworks blasting off all this music playing and like a crowd of people sitting on these lawn area and stuff. I'm gonna be real at this point. I'm just looking for a trash can. <laughs> like music, like pop songs, like, like J-pop rock, J-rock songs and stuff. And the fireworks are sometimes coordinated with the music. And then in between, you get advertisements, like this is brought to you by blah, 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 blah. And then they play the next little package of song with fireworks. And then everybody politely claps. And then more advertisements. And then another firework group with a song. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's 
actually kind of pretty cool that they have these advertisements and these breaks. Like, on one hand, it breaks down... Like, when you watch an American fireworks show, it, like, builds and builds and builds, and the whole thing can be orchestrated. This is, like, you get, like, a little, like, two or three minutes, you have the fireworks, and then you can chat with your friend, and then another two or three minutes of fireworks, and you can chat with your friend. It's much more conductive for dating, I think. <laughs> the fireworks that are being shot off next are, um, like, for a proposal. Like, a guy is proposing to his girlfriend, and he bought her a fireworks package. <laughs> it's awesome. Despite the huge production they have down, like, in the center area, the best view is from a distance. Like, the music isn't blaring your way, and you can see everything without anything, like, like the bridges and stuff in the way. It's just much cooler. Look at that. I can see it in the screen. <laughs> Very cool. That was a nice long creepy shot, wasn't it? <laughs> Without a doubt, my presence here is not normal. <laughs> a lot of people are like, whoa, like when they see me, like in a way that I can't think of the last time that happened in Japan where it was this frequent. And it's not a problem. I mean, I'm a gigantic white guy. I mean, I get it. But um, it just kind of shows that maybe there are a lot of foreigners that make it here. <laughs> I haven't seen it in the daylight yet, but this seems like a pretty nice town. It seems really clean with nice wide streets and just seems like... I mean, it still feels like a Japanese city, but it feels like one of those that's like escalated to a little bit higher level of like like snootiness, not snooty, like in a good way. What's the good word for snooty? That word, that's the word that they, it's, it feels nice. Maybe it'll be different in the morning, but right now I'm pretty impressed. Uh, okay, so um, here's a little bit of information. There's a typhoon coming. <laughs> it's headed like straight here. By the time it's up here, it's just gonna be a big storm. It's not gonna be like a dangerous thing or anything. It's just gonna be rain, but it looks like it's gonna rain for like a week. So, I'm not sure if that means, I mean, usually in Tokyo, if, they, if a typhoon comes through and it's going to rain and rain and rain, it rains like for a week straight, non-stop. So, I can't say I'm really too excited about that. <laughs> um, tomorrow is supposed to be okay, and then after that it's supposed to be get crummy. So, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. Um, tonight, I think I'm just going to go sleep in a park and try out the sleeping bag and um, then save the time that I'm going to have to spend money for accommodation on the nights where it's going to be rainy. So um, that's, my, that's my whole plan. <laughs> um, I'm going to check out the city tomorrow and maybe tomorrow evening or afternoon move on. I'm not, I, got, I really got to decide, like otherwise I'm going to get stuck here because hitchhiking in the rain, I mean that just sucks, you know? So, um, I'm really sorry this got really dark. <laughs> it's like completely disappeared in the shot. But, um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to just decide, like, what it is that I'm gonna do with the, the, the next couple days. Um, I wanna keep moving though. I wanna keep getting towards Eastern Hokkaido. And I'm back. <laughs> sorry about that whole thing. This shot sucked. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, ah, rain, bummer. So I got to this big park and I really expected it to be kind of empty because it's 11 o'clock at night and it's just full of people playing Pokemon. <laughs> I gotta try to find some place a little secluded away from all the, all the Poke stops and whatnot. <laughs> of my hitchhiking adventure. Um, I am actually editing ahead because we're going on a trip to Borneo here in December so I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff prepared so videos keep like coming out while we're on our trip and I'm on like part 13 editing right now and it's still like not anywhere near the end so this is going to keep going for quite a while so I hope you're enjoying it and if you're enjoying it like thumbs up, subscribe, um, social media, social media Patreon. Patreon, yeah so um, we have Facebook and we have Twitter and we have a Reddit account 
a rent a page and then we have a patreon page which is what we use to fund all of our videos essentially so if you want to like see more videos or see more videos like we make other types of videos like we had a soul series that i think mm. well that i don't know if the the last soul video will come out before this or after this but that yesterday was a funny part. yesterday we had korean chicken yeah we did have korean oh, chicken <laughs> dang man that was so good yeah so but i mean if you like uh, the, those types of videos and stuff like the patreon uh, system is the way we have we afford to do all that stuff so if you want to get uh, involved in that then it'd be awesome if you could check that out um and i had something else and i forgot what it was oh so this chicken. video we could talk more about chicken. this video was about a place called obihiro and i'll just give you a little teaser that was my first stop in obihiro and uh there's going to be a second stop on the hitchhiking series a little bit later and um, if anybody knows anything about Obihiro, you might be able to guess why I went back. So maybe the internet sleuths can figure out, why would he go back there? Mm. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You don't even know, do you? No. <laughs> I, I was there in a way where you explained to me that you went there, and I don't even, like, I, in my head, all I was doing was like, how do you spell Obihiro? <laughs> and that, that's all I could think of. Uh, we got a couple of questions here from um, some people from YouTube. And the first one is from uh, the one above all, and that's the username for the, the, this person asked the question. It says, "I know the story of how you two met, but who pursued the relationship? Did you both have a crush on each other and just decided to give it a go?" So, really quickly, <sighs> can we explain how we met? Because I don't. Everybody may not remember or have not seen that in, you know, in the past. Or Back in the day. Uh, when 1994. Eric was, 1994. <laughs> uh, Eric was 14, I was 9. Eric moved to our neighborhood a few houses down from my house, and he became good friends with my brother. And as time went on, he remained friends with my brother, and I saw a lot of him. She thought it was so cool. He was kind of cool. <laughs> and um, as our lives went on around the age of 20... I was like 24, 24 25. 25. Yeah. Um, we, we grew past friendship. Um, prior to that, we'd gone and like hung out together, gone to shows. Yeah, we went to concerts. We know, went to like, more concerts together and yeah, stuff when you were a teenager. It was just mainly like group activities and you're at my freaking house all the time hanging out with my brother. God, go home. <laughs> um, so that's how we met. That's how we knew each other. Um, who pursued who? I am probably going to say I pursued you. What's up, girl? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my crush on you formed before your crush on me formed. Really? Um, I think your love for me formed before my love for you. What? Yeah. How do you quantify all this? Um, just actions. <laughs> and I had gone through a relationship and was really nervous about love, but... It was pretty evident that you liked me a whole lot. I don't hang out with people I don't like. True. <laughs> um, so I would say that I pursued you. It's a little bit hard to explain. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's a hard thing to answer. But probably. Mostly probably because I'm really He's lazy. Timid? Timid? Is that the way to put it? Timid? Yeah. Is maybe how I put it? Maybe. You're... Shy? You, you, oh, God. You're like that sloth. I just like that sloth on Swimming the... Swimming across the river? Yeah. Get that, we, get we, that we've been watching new. Planet Earth. I don't know if you're watching Planet Earth, but that there's that sloth, and he is swimming <laughs> for that girl, man. And I think that... He, you didn't start swimming until maybe a week before, like, we sealed that we are dating, we are together. And so I think we dated, and he was just... Slothing we were just, for, we were dating. for about we were three hanging, months. We weren't dating because dating were is like slothing. when like the guy takes the girl out and like pays and all that, right? That's like how you do. We ne we were we just, never did that. Yeah, we, I wouldn't let you. <laughs> All right, let's let's go on to it. We could talk okay, about this. Okay, and um, this is a long one. That's a long answer. I'm just gonna do uh, one more question this time. Otto Otto asks Eric, where do you get your shirts? It's not really a straight answer on that. This from the people this one, that make cool shirts. Yeah, so this is I got this at Uniqlo in uh, Ginza. And uh, it says San Francisco on it in Japanese. And I don't know, I just thought it was cool. I like the seal. It took me a really long time to remember what shirt I'm wearing, but I realized that I'm wearing Oh, you're wearing the, the, Zuzu, the Zuzum. It's the Zuzum. Hold on. Ah, there we go. <laughs> this is like my favorite shirt. It's a hippo. Yeah, it's a hippo, and he's definitely going for that five mile run. <laughs> yep. I don't know where else. Uh, I, th I got this at a second hand shop here. Oh, really? You got that in Japan? 
I got it in Japan, mm. and it cost more than it would have cost in America mm. at a second-hand yeah, shop. They God, it that. was so worth it. And I went up to her, I was like, can I get it cheaper? And she said, no. <laughs> you asked, you I tried did. to barter There's with the girl? There's some crap on the sleeve <laughs> that, like, you okay. can't get off. And she was like, no, we priced it that way. Okay, I'm going to... I don't know. That's me shopping. I don't, I don't really have, like, a standard place where I get my shirts. I don't know. You buy shirts, like, kind of on the... That shirt's amazing. I'm getting it. I'm not thinking about it. If he has to think about it, he doesn't end up getting it. Like, if he has to think. Is that true? Yeah, that's how I feel about your shirt purchases. Uh, I will sit there and stare at a shirt for 40 minutes, and then I'll get it, and I'll go, God, that really wasn't like a good thinking. shirt. Just get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You get it on impact, and I think that's why your shirts are so good. Are they good? Yeah, they're I need some new shirts. Chop! I need some. I'm hoping that when we go to Borneo, I'll find some new shirts. Maybe one with an orangutan? That'd be good. I don't have yeah. any orangutan shirts. You're definitely going to find one of those. Yeah. That'd be sweet. I just want to go to a market and buy a whole bunch of really colorful t-shirts. That'd be fun, too. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, this is going on for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody.